Congress is kind of a freewheeling, rough and tumble place. But it's what we've got. It's our democracy. Yeah. So the constitutional authority here is found in Article 1. U.S. House and Senate members have all legislative powers. The president enforces the law. The judiciary interprets the law to determine the constitutionality of it. The legislature makes the law. These are the jobs of the three branches in very broad terms. That might be on the final. Could be. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> House members are elected every second year by the people of the several states. And the qualifications are here. They have to be 25 years old. They have to be a citizen of the United States for seven years. And they have to live in a state where they're elected, where they're elected from. Do they have to live in that state for X number of years? Well, that depends on the state. The state, again, controls election requirements. Generally, it's a very short time that they have to live in the state. Electors in each state shall have the most have the eh, excuse me and the electors in each state shall have the qualifications requisite for electors of the most numerous branch of the state legislature. That's just the 1700s way of saying everybody who's qualified to vote for a representative is going to be allowed to do so. All right, just translating that for you. Thought that was a confusing bit of language. Each state will have at least one U.S. representative. The number of representatives in the House is determined by the census. You get at least one representative for every 30,000 people. Now, this was at the beginning. Now we have one representative for every, oh, let's look. It's in the hundred thousands, I know that, but let's give you guys an accurate number. An average of 700,000 people. An average, according to Wahlberg.house.gov. Now, can one person adequately represent the needs of, this is hard enough, 30,000, but can one person adequately represent the needs of 700,000? No. no. And there's a reason that the House is capped to 435 members, which I will explain on Tuesday, because we have about 10 minutes left and I want to plug through a little more. I know, it went fast, didn't it? Or am I wrong? No, we have till 10.45. Oh, we have to? Oh. <laughs> I've been doing this long enough. I had 10.15 in my head for some reason. But there's no way. Yeah, no there's way. no way. All right. <laughs> Pardon me. The Apportionment Act of 1929 is why we still have... 435 members in the House of Representatives. So the House passed, and I'm on history.house.gov. On this date, the House passed the Permanent Apportionment Act, fixing the number at 435. Uh, the U.S. Constitution, as I just said, calls for one representative per state, no more than one for every 30,000 people. So the size of the state's delegation really depended upon uh, the population, but some states were getting so big and others were shrinking uh, that Congress really threw a fit after 1929. They refused to go along with uh, the results of the new census, which would have just ballooned the, the size of the House, and rightfully so because the population had expanded. 
Uh, so the Permanent Apportionment Act capped House membership, as is highlighted in purple here, at the level established after the 1910 census, created a procedure for automatically reapportioning House seats after every census, every 10-year census. So this is why we are at 435. Feels like a lot of numbers, but it's really not for an entire country. No, it's not. Uh, the British House of Lords, for example, has over 800 members. That's the world's largest legislature. They they beat out even they even beat out China. Mr. Andrews. Yeah. Maybe one for every 30,000 people isn't, isn't practical. Not anymore, but do you think we ought to have some more? No, I think that trying, like, if we get more people, then it's going to be more chaotic and less efficient. Um, and I don't think it'd be very effective at actually getting people's needs met and answered. So I think focus on more local community stuff would be much more effective than adding more people to a federal government. Okay, okay. Now putting the Senate aside, mm -hmm. which we'll get to in just a little bit, because I have until 1045, but I thought class ended at 1015. Uh, <laughs> the House of Representatives is already an unwieldy body at best. Would there even be a case for doubling the size of the House of Representatives? I mean, could it get much worse? I have famous last words, I know. But let's, let's brainstorm that idea. I mean, there are legislatures that have more that operate fine, have more members. Well, we're we're not like some other in some other countries around the world. Legislators throw punches at each other on the floor, or throw eggs at the speaker. <laughs> that hasn't happened here yet. Yet. That's the key word. Yet. <laughs> yet. Yeah. So this is important too. Republican major, uh, Republican majority leader John Q. Tilson approvingly declared the act, dispelled the danger of failing to reapportion after each decennial census as contemplated by the Constitution. Decennial just again means 10 years. Opponents such as William R. Bankhead who doubted its constitutionality had earlier described the plan as the abdication and surrender of the vital fundamental powers vested in the Congress of the United States by the Constitution itself. So in 1941, Congress adopted the formula for reapportioning House seats. And that is the reason why we're at 435 members in the House of Representatives. So if a congressman dies, for example, uh, Don Young of Alaska, may he rest in peace, just recently passed away. He was the, the dean of the House of Representatives. Uh, he was also the, well, that th comes along with being the dean. He was the longest serving representative uh, when he was alive. Uh, he was the guy who we watched in the video who said, I, let's have a drink. Oh. That was... That was uh, Don. That was Don Young. That was quintessential Don Young. So the state uh, executive authority, so the governor, in cases of a death of a representative, issues a writ of election to fill vacancies. This is different than senators, which the governor just appoints. So there will be an election to fill the rest of Don Young's term has another year and some change on it.
or am I doing my math wrong there too? He's out in 2024. 20, yeah, okay. Uh, no, it, the the answer it's just called a writ of election. The governor says there will be an election in a formal piece of paper that he stamps with the seal of the in this case the state of Alaska, and that's all. So the House chooses its speaker and other officers. The House has the sole power of impeachment. Now the last two impeachments we've had of President Trump, uh, the House. What that means is the House comes up with a list of things that they believe that the president did that broke uh, his oath to defend the Constitution. That's all that means. The House either ratifies it or it doesn't. If it ratifies it, the House is responsible for transmitting that bill of impeachment to the Senate. The Senate then tries the impeachment. In the case of the president, the chief justice presides over an impeachment. All right, other federal officials don't get that. There isn't a big role for the chief justice. The Constitution just says the chief justice shall preside. So chief justice, we're out. did you have a question, Abby? No, okay. He's kind of, okay. Uh, the Chief Justice, it, it just says the Chief Justice shall preside. So John Roberts in the first Trump impeachment trial, he really didn't know too much what to do. The, the clerk of the Senate was just kind of handing him questions that senators had and things like that. So that's impeachment. Now because a bill of impeachment is passed, it doesn't mean that the president or whoever it is is then just suddenly out of office. It has to go through the Senate. There's the election of the speaker. Pelosi uh, won, not by too much. Duckworth got a vote. Jeffries, Jeffries uh, is a high-ranking Democrat in the House. Three voted president, three didn't vote. So if the people who voted for everybody else voted for McCarthy, we'd have a different speaker. I don't know if that would. She's the Democratic leader. He's the Republican leader. So there's another video here on slide seven. Please watch it. <laughs> 